get physical, it's Jordan here back in with this week's opening, all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We are in the second full week of August, August 9th until the 13th, Monday to Friday, retail, low print, imports and our community spotlight. Let's jump in and see what we've got this week. Shadowverse Champions Battle is releasing this week. This is a card battler, one on one with quite a bit of production gone into it. It has a very anime flavour to it and I'm surprised this got localised as it released in Japan ages ago, but now it's cool to see it here. Sure, it's not the Pokemon card game I was hoping for, but it might be a nice alternative if you're not a fan of the Yu-Gi-Oh guy's hair, because, yeah, I don't like it. Kind of creeps me out, it's way too spiky. Executive producer Jonathan Rumor has chosen this as his pick of the week. Foreclose is a narrative-driven action shooter set in a cyberpunk world filled with action, suspense, and experimental augmentations. It's releasing this week thanks to Merge Games, part graphic novel, part 3D shooter. It looks a little bit budgeted in a charming sort of way, a game trying to punch above its weight, which I respect. Merge often tries stuff like that, so I hope this one turns out alright. They can be a little bit hit and miss sometimes. The shooting looks a little stiff, but hey, maybe you just got out of bed. I mean, you guys should see me in the morning. God, it's rough. And executive producers Santa Tartaruga, Elisa, and Vilos. All three of them have chosen this as their oh. pick of the week. One one do it, one one do it. Sorry, my daughter often watches Paw Patrol in Chinese, so that is in my head for life. One one do it, I mean Paw Patrol, uh, Adventure City Calls. This is a kid's game. I know, sorry to break it to you, apparently based off a movie. You know, there is a time and a place for these kind of games, so I'm not going to judge it straight away. You'll have to see reviews of it before getting it for your kid. Especially the Switch version, these outright games, licensed tie-ins tend not to run so well on the Switch. Buyer beware. Witch Spring 3 is finally getting a Western release this week. Yes, I reviewed this, what, like, uh last year, literally, and I rather enjoyed it in its budgeted, charming way. Yeah, I like this sort of stuff. It's kind of like a top-down Atelier JRPG. Not the best, but a cute addition to fans of such things. Check out my review for more info about it. Of course, it's a little bit dated in regards to its Western release status. Uh, but yeah, this is also getting a strictly limited special version, uh, which you will not be shocked to hear you won't be getting until October or November at the earliest. It is a pity for the retail version, they chose the least nice artwork for the box. The Asian one is still number one by far. Executive producer God of Resin and Cartoon Sorin, both of them have chosen this as their pick of the week. Star Renegades I think is releasing in Europe this week. This took me by surprise since I thought it was later in the month like the North American release, but whatever, I'll talk about it now. This is an ultra stylish RPG, a bit of strategy, a bit of roguelike, extremely badass and looks utterly fantastic. I know a good handful of you out there already have the Japanese version, which came out much early in the year with English, but now it is available for everyone. Except those who ordered the Strictly Limited version, you'll be waiting until the end of the year. Look, I know I bash Strictly Limited almost as much as Limited Run these days, but I don't mean to, I have zero agenda, I just like to, you know, point out the bullshit. And to be honest, Strictly Limited, they have a lot of bullshit these days. I mean, I have no idea what their partner store is for. Collector's edition's fine, I understand that. But why would they have a, like a, a standard release which is like later than the retail release? It doesn't make any sense. Buy at Strictly Limited at your own peril, especially for the partner store editions. Anyways, whatever. Executive producer Robotech and Alexander Kato, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. Also, it looks like Power Rangers Battle for the Great Super Duper Wadupa Edition got delayed until this week. I talked about it a couple of weeks back. Get your Power Rangers action in this surprisingly decent one-on-one -on -one fighter with all the content. Alright, the Low Prince. Now, this week, PlayAsia have yet another exclusive physical release. This week, we've got something rather different from them, a game called Smashing the Battle, Ghost Soul. The base game for this is already on the eShop, but this is an enhanced edition with pretty much double the content. This is a top-down hack-and-slash game made by the same dude as the upcoming Metallic Child, another import I'm rather excited about. This looks like simple, fun action as you take on waves of enemies in different arenas. A bit of fan service to go with it. Anime girls, check. Blowing stuff up, check. 
I don't really need to check any more than that. They've got me with those already. It's almost kind of like a Dynasty Warriors games if it was a little bit indie. Plenty of content as well. Yep, count me in. There is a standard edition for the Switch and limited editions for the Switch and PS4, which includes a soundtrack CD. They got me good boy. The pre-order for this is going live on Thursday, 11 p.m. Hong Kong time, that is 11 a.m. New York time and 4 p.m. UK time. If you could come back to this video at that time and use the links below in the description and the pinned comment, I would appreciate it very, very much as it supports us massively. These Play Asia exclusives really are like the blood that pumped this series into life. I know everyone's wallets are currently feeling bruised and abused thanks to last month's free shipping, but if you want to do this, do me a favor and click the links below on Thursday and use our discount code. Yes, you can get 5% off this order if you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out and you can get 5% off any physical item from Play Asia. Remember these Play Asia games don't stick around for too long. I think the only ones they have left are Seabed and the recent Trigger Witch. Yep, Empire of Angels sold out already. Where the Water Tastes Like Wine was put up for pre-order late last week by Limited Run Games. There's a standard edition as well as a very limited collector's edition which is more than likely sold out by the time this episode goes out. Sorry about that guys. Anyways, this is a narrative adventure that's all about sharing stories, traveling and stuff like that. But there's also a Steenbok edition for all you Steenbok fans out there. It looks decent, although personally I prefer to go somewhere where the water tastes like coffee. Or cinnamon. Banana milkshake. Such a tough choice. Where would you like to go where the water tastes like whatever? Let me know. And our executive producer Brent McLean has chosen this as his pick of the week. Hunt Down is getting a larger CE collector's edition than originally planned. I mean a larger quantity. If you remember back to E3, they had a surprise announcement for a collector's edition for sale at Limited Run Games and it sold out mega quickly leading to a lot of frustrated people. Well, they have now decided to make a larger bunch than previously announced, so there's gonna be another sale of the Hunt Down Collector's Edition at Limited Run Games on the 10th of August. This includes loads of stuff, but just remember, the Standard Edition is coming to retail. Limited Run are only helping out with the Collector's Edition. And Michael Del Polito, our executive producer, has chosen this as his pick of the week. Double Dragon Kunio Kun Retro Brawler Bundle is getting a limited run release on August 13th. I think this is a release of the Kunio Kun World Classics Collection, which has been out in Japan since like 2018. While the menus and stuff were in English, many of the games available did not get translation since the retro titles were never localized. However, they have all been translated for this North American release. So 18 games in total, all from the NES era. If you like Double Dragon and River City games, then fill your boots. There is a standard edition as well as a collector's edition, which includes Kunio Keychains, the original soundtrack on a mini CD, retro cartridge sleeve, poster, and retro dust sleeve. And our executive producer, Punky Dooster, he's chosen this as his pick of the week. Alright, in terms of imports, well there's not much. Obviously Smashing the Battle is a mix of import and low print, but aside from that we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duo, Saikyo Battle Royale, I believe this is heading westwards at some point, but anyways the Japanese release now does not have English. Also Asia seem to be receiving Farmers vs Zombies, but under its proper name Farm for your life. No idea what's going on there, but it is a weird variant. Now before we go into the spotlight, I do have a couple of announcements to make. Firstly, regarding B-Side Games. Now you may remember these guys. They are a Japanese low print company and they produce like six games and unfortunately they are going out of business. And I say unfortunately because they have produced some really beautiful packages. But on the other hand, they are having a massive sale on all of the games they have left. Yes, shipping is high, but if you buy like like four or five games or something, uh, then it should be worth it. You know, for like $100, five games, that, I think that's pretty good. With quality packaging, it is a decent deal. I would say get Kamiko, Golf Story, Brave Dungeon. They have English and are exclusive and their packaging is just gorgeous. Absolutely sublime. Cat Quest is nice too, but that has a Western release, but not as lovely as this one. Quartet Fighters does not have English, 
but it is a shmup, so a no problemo, I would think. It is a real pity because their packages, as I've said like five times already, they're just beautiful. The card sleeve is just magnificent. It's one of the best out there in the business. So, yeah, don't miss out on these. Uh, say that Switch Watch sent you. Also, I put out a video on Friday, one of the nichest things that we have ever done. We reviewed a Japanese game that does not have English. A risque game uh, that some people may want to import regardless of language skills. We're hoping to start a new series, so if you want some weird and wonderful Japanese exclusives, please go show your support to that video. It's about Love Our Kiss, a dating sim slash photography game. It is a bit interesting, I would say. Alright, let's delve into the community spotlight this month. I'm going to be giving away something a little special. I'm giving away Super Robot Wars T. Oh yeah. Firstly me, this time I'm going to be showing off something Premium Edition Games sent me, full disclosure. Well, you already know that I showed off Super Blood Hockey and Pigeon Dev Collection with their pre-order cover sheets. Well, they have other editions. Firstly, Super Blood Hockey initially did not have a retro edition. Well, those who did buy the base game, now you have a chance to upgrade to a retro edition, where you can build your own nice box and stick a sweet soundtrack in it, which includes the full soundtrack plus a couple of unused tracks, and you get a short, sweet little comic book, which is rather nice quality. Now, Super Blood Hockey, I have been told, is almost sold out. They have less than 100 copies left, so jump on that if you need it, either the Standard Edition or the Retro Upgrade Edition. You have slightly more time with Pigeon Dev Collection, but here is the Retro Edition, which has a nice NES-style aesthetic to it. You'll remember this contains four games, uh, Awesome P 1 and 2, Explosive Jake and Bucket Knight. So personally, I like to call this collection Awesome Explosive Knight. I think that works better. This retro edition includes the base game plus, look out fans, Steenbok. Yes, we've got a good old Steenbok and you know what? It is quality. It looks much better in person than the promo shots on the website, I promise. The color is nicer. It's got some depth to it, nice sheen to it. I believe that this is the second Steenbok in my collection. Can you guess which one the first is? Or maybe you'll remember. I think I showed it off many moons ago. If you want either of these, head over to Premium Edition Games to pick up your copies. Remember, they have the Standard Editions, the Retro Editions, and for Pigeon Dev Collection, they have a Super Duper Premium Duper Edition. Uh, I forgot what it's called off the top of my head, but it's Super and Duper, and it's got a big massive book with it. It looks quality. Alright, on to you lot. If I missed your picture, I am sorry, especially on Twitter. I had a lot going on over there the past week. I had so many notifications, so... Uh, I think some of you may have got lost in, so I apologize in advance. Firstly, like any good 80s action hero, they may disappear for a while, but they sure as hell come back with a vengeance. Kurt Cannongrave coming back guns blazing with a double helping of Monster Hunter Rise and Stories 2. I did not realize they were so uniform. I like it. Welcome back, Kurt. B Salt got in a couple of gems, Untitled Goose Game, which I showed off recently enough, and a recent RPG game, Chris Tales. Are you all enjoying this one, or is it in your backlog? Legend86, who goes by Limited Print Switch Games News Channel over on Twitter, but was rather nice to me, let me say Legend86, sent me this photo with some nice, fantastic games, a lot of popular titles, but Great to see Cotton get its Western release. There's something really odd about that. Like, a few years ago, who would have thought a Cotton game would get a proper retail release in 2021? It's unthinkable. But here it is. Great. Etienne seemed to have watched one of our European exclusive videos by picking up one of the cheap gems from Play Asia, Lovecraft's Untold Stories, nice game. Kaz showed off the far better cover of Super Meat Boy, i.e. the one that doesn't make me want to vomit. Nintendo Gamer Gal scored these over the past month, a nice selection of games and accessories. There's some big Nintendo titles that I've really neglected recently, but you know, everyone has a budget. Yoshiro showed off Kotodama, did I say that right? After appearing occasionally in the series and telling people that it's a decent tool for intermediate Japanese learners, they picked it up. J Clown picked up the lovely looking Spirit Fairer, some really nice artwork and bonus goodies to go with it. Elliot Smith picked up a couple of low print releases, Carto from I Am 8-Bit and Griffin Knights from Strictly Limited, both small but nice indie titles. 
Steven665, many thanks for using our links and codes on Empire of Angels. Now completely sold out on Play Asia, but thank you for your support. Choco Loco James picked up the Asian version of Blaster Master Zero Trilogy, a really top import, although getting this collector's edition was not easy. I think Play Asia still have some of that left, but it sold really well. Links are below if you really want it. James Church enhanced his Atelier collection with the recent Mysterious Trilogy, a brilliant import. It will break the bank, but I think it's worth it for three quality JRPGs. Chris Stade picked up these some cute amiibo, plus some recent AAA titles for the Switch. I wish I had the money. Chewit picked up these the collector's edition of Towerfall. I don't think we've seen that too much. I think it was one of their niche titles from Limited Run, going by the name recognition of Celeste alone. Nicholas Sanchez, many thanks for using our links and codes for some of these games. I was surprised to see Aria Chronicles sell out on Play Asia, and Legend of Mana is really taking its time getting back in stock. Both popular imports. Zelkio Markovic, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, uh, but they got some fine titles, the much sought after Shantae Pirates Curse. Just someone print it again, guys. The demand is there, everyone wants it. Also, a cute Euro exclusive in Agalos. Todd picked up these games, the trilogy of RPG factory games. Maybe not the best JRPGs out there, but there's elements that are promising. I'm hoping their fourth game elevates them to a higher level of recognition. Jose Zapata sent in this photo of some fine games. Love seeing Final Fantasy IX there, still battling boldly against Super Robot Wars T, Ninja Gaiden, and Atelier Dust Trilogy in terms of the most popular imports ever. Although, once Legend of Mana is back in stock, they'll be having something to say about that. Lara sent in this photo. There's a Skittles-like quality to the USK rating there in this picture, almost like a rainbow. Audrey Paquin sent in this photo, another Steam Prism. Really surprised to see how much I'm seeing this one. It is obscure, but it's definitely found its audience outside of Japan. YZ sent in this photo of some good games, including the double pack of Ace Attorney games. Brilliant little pack if you don't own the first game already from an import. Switch back sent in this photo, including a game we have not seen much. Perhaps a little obscure now, Iris 4. Looks like an interesting puzzle game. Sheng Long sent in this photo, picking up the Fantastic Saga Frontier. Sorry, I will not shut up about it. If you're an importer, this is essential. Champ Dancer, many thanks for using our links and codes. So happy to see Romance of the Three Kingdoms there. Only this Southeast Asian version has English, and I hope there's more coming in the future. I love the series. Cartoon Soren finally got his sense after it being lost in the post. Plus picked up Ginger after seeing one of the Euro exclusive videos. It's not a great game, in fact, it's terrible. But that's the fun thing about it. Plus it's not easy to get, although I heard it's more available in Spain than elsewhere. Bulge Monkey sent in this photo of some nice games. Demo is a US exclusive that will be appearing this week in the North American exclusive video. Look out for that video probably on maybe Wednesday. Goma picked up these games including the Dungeon of Nibelheim. Plus, I just adore how generic Speed 3 is. That is some balls to be that generic. Executive producer God of Resin picked up these. Apparently he got a decent deal for Food Girls Collector's Edition. Not easy to get that for a good price these days. It is a nice package. Executive producer Robo, take many thanks for your double support with the links to some of these. Great RPGs. Legend of Mana, Aria Chronicle and Saga Frontier. Alright, let's have a roundup. Geese Nuts, Alejandro Amesquita, Aldemar Banal, Bruno Silva, Demigs. V, Bryson Coldwell, Pabs, Sosha, Drugi Forever, Merciless Switch Collector, Vivisipan, Ganicus, Invicta, Griffin, Weak for Waifus, McLaren, Knee, Starby, Neverbirth. All right, please send me your pictures on Twitter over at So What About Game. You can DM me or tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. We have an email address, switchwatchspotlight at gmail.com. Plus, we have a Discord, which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys. And you can send your pictures there in the submissions section. Discord server link is below. Please send me just one picture per week. 
Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, Goda Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J. Cross, 7776, Elisa, Punky Doosta, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Soren, Jack Severus, Vilos, Robotech, and our brand new executive, Z. Many thanks for your wonderful and amazing support. Plus you, yes, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, what a legend you are. If you are one of the few who did, then leave me a high five in the comments and I'll give you a high five back. Here are some of our other stuff. Go check them out. We'll see you guys over there. Have a good one.